I hear you. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the meeting of the Mayor and Council of Princeton, New Jersey. It is April 24th, 2023. Could we have the meeting statement, please? Yes, Mayor. Can you hear me? Try again. Okay. Yes. There you go. Adequate notice that this meeting was provided in accordance with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act, including the time, date, and location of the meeting. In addition, the agenda and all related materials were posted electronically and made available to the public on Princeton's meeting portal in advance of the meeting. Thank you. We gather we today. You want to do oh, it? Go ahead, go ahead, David. Sorry. We gather today on the land of the Lenny Lenape. As members of the Princeton community, we aspire to show appreciation, respect, and concern for all peoples and our environment. We honor the Lenape and other indigenous caretakers of these lands and waters, the elders who lived here before, the indigenous today, and the generations to come. Thank you. Could we have roll call, please? Ms. Perone Lambros is absent. Ms. Niedergang? Here. Mr. Cohen? Here. Ms. Sachs? Here. Ms. Fraga? Here. Mr. Nolan? Here. Mayor Frieda? Here. If you'd uh, like to, please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands. Okay, thank you. First up is approval of the minutes from the April 10th, 2023 meeting. Would someone uh, move those? David, thank you. Is there a second? Thank you. I'm sorry. I'll just mention I had a minor change from what was originally posted on the website. Um, I understand from Dolores that it's been modified to... Yes, you're correct, David. Yeah. Okay, Eve, you seconded that? Okay, any other questions or comments? I right. just wanted to say that one was supposed to be removed, so it's two minutes on the agenda. Oh. I... Wait, it's two sets of minutes? No, it's just one. Just the one, okay. Just, yes. Okay, all right, all in favor of approving the April 10th uh, minutes, please say aye. 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 And, and Mayor, can I just again express my appreciation for having these done so quickly? It really makes reviewing them so much easier. So thank you, Dee, and the rest of the clerk's office. Yep. Okay, let's go to announcements and reports. We'll start up top with uh, council members that have either announcements or reports. Leticia? Yes, uh, just more of a report, not so much of an announcement. Uh, about uh, Saturday's Loteria Community Building event. It was a great success. Uh, and I want to thank, I see two of our, you can't hear? Is something wrong with the mics? Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't sound like they're working. You, because I think the volume is just other. low. Uh, I think they're working, but. No, I can't. We'll have them turn the volume up. Can you hear me now? No? Okay. Try it. Hello, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can't even hear, I, I can tell it's not, like it's, no. Why don't you try Leighton's microphone and see if that works. No, they're not, they're not. No, they couldn't hear you either. No. Hello? No. All right, stand by, technical difficulty. <laughs> we could just talk in. I just pretend? <laughs> No, it's ours over yeah. here. It's, it's all of them. It's all of them. <laughs> it's got to be the, that's the highest pressure job in the municipality <laughs> at a moment like this. <laughs> hello, hello. Okay, as if we were on Zoom. Mm -hmm.
Can you hear me now? Yes, there, you can. There we there go. We go. So on to my reports. I just wanted to mention at last uh, Saturday's uh, Loteria Community Building event was a great success. And I want to thank the university's art museum for hosting it. I also, I see two of our, uh, two individuals who joined us and served as uh, celebrity callers, Mayor Frida, and I see Kristen in the back. I hope you have fun too. I know uh, everybody who attended had fun and, and showed appreciate, express appreciation for us hosting it. And we've already had a couple of community partners reaching out, uh, interested in, in hosting future events. So I, I think they're, they've become um, really popular and would like to, you know, would love to continue doing them. Uh, it's a fun event. And I also wanted to mention that uh, for, for those who may have seen that there was a civilian police academy uh, that, was, that was open to the public, I actually signed up and attended my first one last week. It is, I'm really excited about all that we're going to be covering. It's going to provide a lot of insight uh, on what the department, uh, the different units do, uh, go on ride-alongs, uh, do the virtual training that some of my colleagues already took part on, but hope, I think more intense, get some uh, self-defense course, and also become uh, CPR certified. So I'm really uh, excited and looking forward to it and hope that it's something that we can, uh, that our police department will be able to continue offering every year. And if they do, I encourage my colleagues to, to try it out next year. That's it. Thank you. Other, oh, Eve? Uh, thanks, thanks, Mayor. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the uh, stream cleanup that happened uh, this past Saturday, which was Earth Day. So I hope everyone got out and did something to uh, commemorate that event. Uh, I spent the morning with about 100 other people in uh, Hilltop Park uh, cleaning up. And uh, we had over 100 people. Uh, volunteers from Princeton and the surrounding area and we picked up, I didn't get a final number, but hundreds of pounds of trash. And uh, just to stress that the picking up the garbage not only beautifies the community, but it also keeps all that trash, which everything rolls downhill and everything goes into the water. So everything you can keep out of the water really helps protect our natural environment and our waterways, which uh, are very important uh, for all living things. So uh, thank you to the Watershed Institute for organizing and the Environmental Commission for selecting the site and coordinating to our Department of Public Works, who picked up all the trash that we, some of which was just astounding, the kinds of things that you find like in the woods, you know, car batteries and tires and carts and a very nice bicycle that seemed in great shape, a little rested, but um, anyway, so, and all the volunteers who pitched in. So I just wanted to uh, say that and we'll be doing it again next year if you wanna join us. Thank you. Other council, Mia. Uh, I'd like to thank three other organizations who did an amazing job on Earth Day. Sustainable Princeton held an event at Morven Gardens. Uh, Friends of Princeton Open Space held a tree planting um, extravaganza at uh, the Mountain Lakes, in the Mountain Lakes area. And uh, Friends of Herontown Woods held an all-day um, family activities, hikes, and um, everything else event at uh, Herontown Woods. And it was really, um, it was hard to make it to all three. The last one, they were just closing up, so I missed, missed uh, most of Herontown Woods. But um, it was just a tribute to the commitment to sustainability in our community. And um, uh, it was a beautiful day and a great way to kick off our sustainable summer. So thank you to all three of those organizations. Thank you. Uh, Leighton. Thank you, Mayor. Yes, I'd just like to announce in the spotlight the annual spring event for Corner House benefiting uh, behavioral health. It will be held again on Friday, April 28th from 6 to 9 p.m. at the Boathouse at Mercer Lake on Post Road in West Windsor. Uh, you can get tickets online at www.cornerhouse.com. Uh, if you cannot go, please consider making a 
small donation uh, on behalf of Corner House who does behavioral treatment, uh, drug awareness and prevention for youth. Thank you. Thank you. Any other? David. Yeah, I'll just uh, quickly mention that we, uh, on behalf of the Pedestrian Bike Advisory Committee, we have two more bike valet events coming up this Saturday uh, at Porch Fest. I'm not going to try and list all of the locations, but we have 10 racks uh, spread around town. And I believe there's a map on the um, Arts Council's uh, website. And then the following uh, week, the Arts Bazaar, which will be at the Arts Council and um, we'll, have, we'll have racks there as well. So please feel free to uh, bring your bikes and know they'll be secure. Thank you, David. Any other council reports or announcements? Any staff announcements or reports for now? Nothing, Mayor. Okay, thank you. All right, next up is the municipal, the 2023 municipal budget. And we have 23157, which is a resolution of the mayor and council of Princeton, approving the amendments to the 2023 municipal budget. Uh, public hearing now. So is that, uh, someone wanna make a motion on that? Thank you, Eve, Mia's got the second. Council questions and comments, and then we'll do public question and comments. Any, nothing? Anybody from the public here in the room that has any questions or comments on that? All right, anybody online? Just raise your virtual hand if you do. All right, seeing none, uh, roll call vote please. Miss Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newland? Yes. Okay, next up on the budget is 23158, resolution of the mayor and council of Princeton to adopt the 2023 municipal budget. Is there a motion? Thank you, Mia. Eve's got the second. Any council questions or comments? All right. Anyone from the public with a question or comment? Anybody online with a question or comment? All right, seeing none, roll call vote, please. Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Nolan? Yes. Okay, thank you. Next up, we have three proclamations. The proclamations are in front of each of us, and we've split them up, and either your name or initials are next to a couple clauses. So we'll see how well we do in reading uh, either Eve's writing, which is much nicer than mine, or my chicken scratched on the other two, and you'll figure out what your initials or name are, hopefully. Eve, do you want to start? Yes, thanks. I, I just want to say, uh, express my great appreciation uh, to our, our public library, our library director and uh, CFO are both here, as well as the uh, president of the board of uh, trustees, and um, say that, uh, you know, the library is a wonderful place to go any time of the year, but uh, especially this week when it's uh, National Library Week, and just I'm sure you've been reading what's going on uh, in, in the news and the attacks on, on libraries and, and the content that they carry. And, you know, um, I'm so thankful that, that here in Princeton, you know, we have a library with really strong policies that have really been reviewed carefully and so uh, should request to remove material uh, come along. We have a really firm uh, uh, legal uh, framework to, uh, to stand on and I, I think that's really crucial. So I thank uh, Jennifer, Susan, uh, Bob, the library staff for making sure we're in such a, a strong position. And I also want to note we're in addition to this proclamation, we are also passing a resolution, uh, uh, pretty much the same thing, endorsing uh, National Library Week. So I'll get us started here. Uh, National Library Week 2023 proclamation. Whereas libraries provide the opportunity for everyone to pursue their passions and engage in lifelong learning, allowing them to live their best life. And whereas libraries have long served as trusted institutions for all members of the community, regardless of race, ethnicity, creed, ability, sexual orientation, gender identity, or socioeconomic status, and yep. 
Whereas libraries strive to develop and maintain programs and collections that are as diverse as the populations they serve and ensure equity of access for all. And whereas libraries adapt to the ever-changing needs of their communities, continually expanding their collections, services, and partnerships, and Whereas lib libraries are cornerstones of democracy, promoting the free exchange of information and ideas for all, and whereas Princeton Public Library is recognized as a national leader in providing expansive library services to a diverse, dynamic, and growing community, and whereas Princeton Public Library is an accessible and inclusive place that advances connection, understanding, civic engagement, and shared community goals, and... Whereas Princeton Public Library is joining library workers, supporters, and advocates across the nation to celebrate National Library Week, and... Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Mark Frieda, Mayor of the Municipality of Princeton, County of Mercer, State of New Jersey, proclaim April 23rd to 29th, 2023, National Library Week in Princeton. During this week, I encourage all residents to visit Princeton Public Library to explore the abundance of resources available, signed today. Thank you very much. Okay, Mia, you're starting us off on the next one. Vicki, Vicki Keynes. You ready? Okay. Uh, this is a proclamation honoring Vickery, Vicki Keynes on the occasion of her retirement. Whereas the municipality of Princeton is proud to recognize Vicki Keynes of the Department of Recreation for her dedication to public service on the occasion of her retirement and Whereas Vicki Keynes began her career with the Princeton Recreation Department on March 31st, 1998 in the role of Recreation Secretary and was consistently recognized for superior performance throughout her career. And whereas Vicki has demonstrated remarkable professionalism and commitment and has made significant contributions to the growth and development of many impactful recreational programs and Whereas Vicki received the statewide professional recognition of Employee of the Year from the New Jersey Recreation and Parks Association in 2015, and whereas Vicki's legacy of hard work and compassion has been exemplified in the dedication of her own time and efforts in the creation of beautiful community gardens throughout the municipal complex, and whereas through Vicki's initiative and vision, the gardens continue to serve as a place of inspiration and peaceful reflection to the community and staff of the municipality of Princeton and whereas Vicki Kane's retirement from the municipality of Princeton will be effective May 1st, 2023 and whereas Vicki Kane's has served the community of Princeton with pride for 25 years and upon the occasion of her retirement is deserving of recognition and the highest commendation. Now, therefore, be resolved, I, Mark Frieda, Mayor of Princeton, extend the municipality's humble expression of appreciation and sincere congratulations to Vicki Keynes. We offer our best wishes for a long, happy, and healthy retirement. What follows is a proclamation from the Municipality of Princeton, Office of the Mayor, a proclamation honoring Jeffrey Opalski, on the occasion of his retirement. Whereas the municipality of Princeton is proud to recognize Jeffrey Opalski of the Department of Public Works for his dedication to public service on the occasion of his retirement and. Whereas Jeffrey Opalski began his career with the borough of Princeton on August 14, 2000 in the role of custodian and whereas Jeffrey has been an integral part of maintaining daily operations, demonstrating a strong work ethic, attention to detail, and a deep sense of responsibility, and... Whereas Jeffrey has taken great pride in his work of maintaining the municipality of Princeton's property, ensuring our facilities were safe, clean, and welcoming for all who entered, 
And whereas Jeffrey has been an exemplary employee, always willing to go above and beyond, rising to task on his days off to resolve any issues. And whereas Jeffrey has been a source of joy and laughter for all those who have had the pleasure of working with him. And whereas Jeffrey Opalski's retirement from the municipality of Princeton will be effective May 1st, 2023. And whereas Jeffrey Opalski has served the community of Princeton with pride for 23 years and upon the occasion of his retirement is deserving of recognition and the highest commendation. Now, therefore, be it resolved, I, Mark Frieda, Mayor of Princeton, extend the municipality's humble expression of appreciation and sincerest congratulations to Jeffrey Opowski. We offer our best wishes for a long, happy, and healthy retirement. Okay, thank you. Next up is a presentation from the Princeton Senior Resource Center. I don't know if that's turned on. Now can you hear me? <laughs> Good evening. You, you got to put it a little bit closer. How's this? Go. Yeah, that just doesn't want to stay up. That? How's this? Okay. No. No. Just a little bit down. It's just that when well, it gets no, too far is... down, it's it's. <laughs> Ah. You Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Drew. Now you, now you can see what a pleasure it is. Uh, <laughs> I'm Joan Gerges. I'm the chair of the board of the Princeton Senior Resource Center. And I want to begin by thanking the mayor and the council for all of the support and collaboration that we do with you, have done with you, and will look forward to doing with you continuing into the future. I particularly want to thank Eve Niedergang, who is the li liaison from the council to BSRC, and David Cohn, who was the first of the liaisons and set, set the tone for the future. PSRC actually was founded in 1974. So we are 49 years old. We will soon be old enough to belong to PSRC, which is for 55 and up. Um, but it really has been much longer than I think people realize that we've been a fixture in the community. Started in Spruce Circle to provide support and programming for the older adults who live there and have expanded, as you will see later uh, from Drew, uh, to a much bigger and more complicated organization. We think our work together PSRC and the, ta and the municipality of Princeton is a, is a national model. It's a model for ways in which a municipality can collaborate and support a nonprofit. Uh, and we are enormously grateful for your willingness to engage with us to make this model work. It's really a good thing. Um, I would now want to introduce Drew Dyson, the wonderful president and CEO of PSRC. He's going to tell you about the expansion of our programs and services over the last few years, because that has been astonishing. Now, yeah. All right, good evening. Thank you for uh, this opportunity to uh, share with you a little bit about the work that we have uh, done over the last year and the last several years as PSRC has continued to grow from where it was in 1974 to where it is uh, now. One of the first things that we uh, achieved since our last time of presenting uh, to you is we completed our strategic planning process uh, leading to the mission and vision statement that you see uh, before you, that we are a nonprofit organization that exists to help older adults thrive. That is primarily who we are and what we do. Uh, we do this by offering support and guidance 
to older adults and their families by providing vital human connections, compassionate social services, dynamic lifelong learning, and meaningful volunteer opportunities that promote active, healthy, and engaged aging for adults age 55 and above. And our vision is to be an indispensable community asset for older adults and for their families as they navigate the journey of aging. We envision a world together where older adults embrace aging and they are valued for their wisdom, experience, and talent, and all that they bring to us. Over the last several years, we've had quite a bit of uh, growth in our programs, and I want to share just a few highlights of those uh, with you. Joan, if you can click to the, the next slide, please. So in terms of our lifelong learning programs, uh, they have been uh, significantly expanded since, uh, one, since our transition to virtual and online, uh, but also over the course of all of our lifelong learning program, the number of programs that we presented uh, three years ago to now is more than a 65% increase. So we're doing 165% of what we were uh, just three years ago in terms of our programming. And not only that, but we are delivering that programming in three distinct modes, lifelong, uh, online, hybrid, and in-person programming. So we've increased the, the offerings, but also the different ways that we offer those programmings. And those uh, hybrid programming and the virtual programming has really helped in uh, great regard to connect with people that surprised us even when we first started to do it. One is uh, people who spend a few months of the year down south. They don't like the snow, which we haven't had, but they still went down south, or they went to other places, or they go to visit family. Uh, but also people who used to participate in the life of the center but are now homebound. And that virtual programming has really helped us uh, to connect with homebound people as well. Uh, we've also seen new organizational connections with PSRC, an organization many of you are probably familiar with, Community Without Walls, uh, that started about 25 years ago to connect older adults with one another in small groups, uh, has become part of PSRC. We've also started working with On Stage Seniors, which is a dramatic production group, used to be connected with McCarter, uh, and they have come and become a part of PSRC, and our Senior Citizens Club that actually started in the Witherspoon Jackson neighborhood uh, that is now part of PSRC, and they just had their meetings on Friday. Uh, we've also seen dramatic increase in our exercise and fitness programs. In addition to the aerobics and yoga and chair yoga we've done, we've started doing pickleball. We've had over 125 people take pickleball lessons in the last several months. Uh, and pickleball, as you know, is an ever popular sport among older adults in particular. Uh, and, and other things that have added to that. And our technology lab, which is a world-class technology lab where people help older adults every single day with different computer and technology uh, needs. But you can see uh, just a few of the numbers, Joan, if you go to the next uh, slide, where we were four years ago to where we are now in terms of health and, and wellness uh, participants, our Evergreen Forum, the enrichment programs, and the program participants unique to just our, this is just our classes, over 2,600 people uh, every year. That's not in our social services. This is just our programs and classes uh, up from 1,800 just four years ago. Our next slide uh, talks about the, the expansion of our social service uh, programs and offerings. Our support groups for older adults has more than doubled, not only in the number of people, but also in the number of offerings, new support groups offering to the community. Um, we've had an increase in the, the amount of case management referrals and support and guidance that our social worker and our social services department members do. Uh, we've expanded our affordable housing uh, supportive services. We've renewed our relationship with the Princeton Housing Authority. We've added as a community partner with Pearl, uh, and you all know the work that that's, that's gone into that to help uh, both the municipality, PSRC, and uh, that development, which will bring 80 single affordable 
80 units of affordable housing for seniors to uh, the Princeton area. And so all of that work with uh, PHA, with other community partners. Uh, and we've also uh, have a dynamic staff team uh, who's focusing on diversity and outreach. We're hiring uh, just starting next week, uh, Anna Carolina Gonzalez-Pena, who is uh, going to be our coordinator for diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging. She begins on May 1st. Uh, Ella Leving is going to be added to our staff at the end of the summer uh, and brings a lot of experience and wealth. Joanna Peters is our new director of social services, comes to us from uh, Manhattan, where she worked for the Department of Human Services in New York City. Uh, one of the roles that she had at DHS is to run uh, the Adult Protective Services Unit in Manhattan. Uh, and she's now our new director of social services and our social worker, Billy Sharon, and the work that she does. So it's an outstanding team, and the numbers uh, tell a little bit of that story on the next slide. Uh, our support and discussion group participants uh, more than doubled in the last four years. Our social service contacts has uh, nearly doubled uh, in four years. That's the number of people that we're engaging with in terms of uh, referrals, uh, parents, uh, children of aging parents, other folks. Uh, case management, we do over 1,000 hours of case management every year. Uh, and over 2,700 unique participants who are across our support groups or other things that are connected through our social services. Uh, and so uh, those are some of the, the things that we've seen in terms of our increases. We've also worked hard to uh, strengthen our relationship uh, with the municipality and other community partners. I am uh, incredibly grateful for Jeff Grosser and the staff at the health department for the work that we've done uh, together. And, and they've been a huge support to uh, PSRC. And I think we've had a great uh, relationship. We're continuing to work together on uh, vaccines and overall community health for older adults, uh, partnerships with, with Pearl and what that means with our uh, partners at Princeton Housing Authority uh, and other community partners that we've worked hard to restore. And in the midst of all of that, we've opened our new building uh, at 101 Poor Farm Road to complement uh, the offerings at the Suzanne Patterson building. So we've been able to purchase the building, renovate the building, relocate uh, our offices there, uh, create a hybrid learning in environment there that is one of the first of its kind in the country. So I've been doing presentations for the National Council on Aging on developing a hybrid senior center. That's something that uh, we're one of the first in the country to do, and I've had the opportunity to give, a, give that as a model. Uh, and so that 101 Poor Farm Road is an extraordinary building, uh, and it, and it I believe, showcases the value and worth we ascribe to the aging population. If you haven't had a chance to, to be there, I invite you to come and, and visit. And it provides a great complement to the Suzanne Patterson building, where there's a gym, where we're able to continue to, that's why we can do the exercise and the, and the health and wellness programs with what we're able to do there. And so together, they're extraordinary. And because of the generosity of this community, uh, community. We've done it through a successful capital campaign. We've paid off the building with no debt. We'll celebrate next month that we hit 100% of our capital campaign uh, and we're able to complete that uh, building in that project. But all of those numbers tell one story, but it's the stories that bring the work uh, to life. One of my favorite stories is of two uh, sisters, one who lives in Princeton, one who lives in California, during the pandemic, they started taking an Evergreen Forum class together online, uh, and they would take the class together, and then they would meet virtually for lunch after their Evergreen Forum class. And they've done that every semester since March of 2020. It enables that uh, connection between these two uh, sisters. I think about the, the woman that we helped to learn Zoom, not only to participate in the programs, but she wanted to take our Zoom 201 class to learn how to host and other things. And it was in the, the, a few uh, years ago that she said that what that enabled her to do was to host a family virtual Seder in the spring, where she, as the matriarch of the family, was actually the host. She said, all my grandkids wanted to do it, but I am the hostess. I've always been, I'm the matriarch of the family. And so just her joy and pride in being, being able to do that. 
There's an email we got from the librarian at the Little Brook School, if you're familiar with the Grand Pals program that connects older adults with kindergarten students in uh, Princeton. The librarian of Little Brook sent me a note uh, a few months ago, and she said, I wanted to share a little bit of Grand Pal joy. We have two new students that came to Little Brook last week in fourth grade and fifth grade. They speak Korean with very little English. Ju, who is our coordinator of intergenerational programming, her name is Ju Nam. Ju met one of these young people in passing and asked if she could be of help. Well, we coordinated with the teachers for her to meet with them every week before Grand Pals to chat in Korean. And I saw them in the lobby today with her and they were glowing. Those are the kind of stories that bring the work to life. There's the two women who work together in a nearby corporation for 30 years who actually met together in our program called Aging Gaily. Well, they had never uh, come out to one another. It wasn't part of their shared work experience, but they met at this group, and it was an extraordinary encounter and experience for them just to connect in that way at a different level in their lives, and it led one couple in the group to write us to share, thank you for creating a safe place for LGBTQ older adults, not just in this group, but in the open and inclusive programs that you offer every day. And so those are the stories that, uh, that help us to, to bring to life the numbers that you see. A few things that we're looking ahead to on the next slide, some things that are, are next. We're in the process of rebranding and uh, developing all that rebranding work that'll come with a new website and new outreach into the community. Uh, we're bringing, because of our strategic planning and the work we've done, an increased focus on diversity and outreach with our additional staff, uh, but also a focus on uh, creating new and expansive programming that's uh, multilingual programming, programming that's offered on evenings and weekends, expanding what we're able to do. And then, as I mentioned, our vaccine navigator initiative. And then a few things that we see on the horizon. Uh, one is to continue to build out a fully online and branded senior center. Uh, we have an opportunity to create something that's a, a model uh, that um, creates online only participation in a local senior center. There's lots of online programs you may see like Senior Planet by AARP. There's other uh, large programming, but they don't have the personal connection of being a, a local senior center and being able to connect with people uh, in that online forum is important. We're in the process of developing developing something called Third Act, a purposeful retirement, where what we envision is a cadre of uh, older adults who are interested in giving back to the community. We have access and connections with thousands of older adults in our community who have a desire to give back. And we're partners with community partners and other nonprofits and community organizations that could use volunteers. And so the opportunity to uh, put uh, those two things together and create a, a connection point for uh, volunteers who want to serve in the community. And then continuing to expand our commitment to affordable housing uh, for seniors with our partners at the Housing Authority, with our partners at Pearl, uh, with uh, Princeton Community Housing, with others, because we we believe in the, the, the most important um, issue facing older adults in our community will continue to be affordable housing. And that's something that the, the new buildings will provide access to, but it's something that's going to continue to be a need uh, as we move forward into the community. So once again, we appreciate uh, the opportunity to, uh, to share just a little bit about uh, what we're doing. And I'm willing to answer any questions uh, or receive any comments that you might have. Thank you. Thank you, Drew. Thank you, Joe. David? Um, I love that last slide sort of saying that those programs sound great. It says a little further out. Can you talk about how much further out? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, some of them are being uh, written up as grants as we speak. So uh, within the next uh, year, I would imagine, will be the third act, purposeful retirement. That's something that we think uh, will serve the entire community in a pretty significant way. Uh, and to become that um, 
that clearinghouse for people to be able to connect with opportunity. So we think that's something in the, in the next year. Uh, and the online and branded senior center, probably in the next year to two years, that that would be you know, fully viable on its own. We offer so many courses already, it's really part of our branding and packaging of that uh, to be online. And then the affordable housing, I think, is gonna be a pressing need well into the future. So. Thank you. Oh, Mia? I'm so glad to hear about, to be reminded of the partnership with, with the Pearl Senior Housing, because I think that's going to be what makes the difference between just a residence mm -hmm. and a community, and I, and I really appreciate your work with that. Um, and also, I just wanted to say how incredibly impressed I am that you met the, the goals of your capital campaign in such an expeditious time frame um, at, a, at a time period during COVID when it was particularly difficult to for most organizations to meet their fundraising goals, and it really says a lot about um, your commitment to your work that you were able to accomplish that. So we Excellent. really value the partnership, and thank you for coming to share. So. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, thanks for your presentation, Drew, and you know, just want to say um, that I'm happy I live in a community that values not only the youth but its seniors for their wisdom and for the, their longevity and. Um, also, just want to say I've been to the new location on any number of occasions for any number of reasons. It is welcoming and it is warm. And uh, it, it really uh, says a lot about how we value old folks here in Princeton. So thanks again for all the work you're doing, and I look forward to seeing you there soon. Excellent. Thank you. Leticia? Yes. Uh, I, too, want to thank you for a wonderful presentation and also for uh, your commitment to increase focus on diversity and outreach. I, and I truly, truly appreciate uh, the efforts you'll be making to reach out to uh, member, our members of our community who are non-English uh, non speaking. So I, I truly appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah. Eve. I can't, can't be the only one who doesn't <laughs> say anything. So uh, thank you, Drew and Joan, for this uh, a wonderful presentation. I just want to go back to those uh, dark days of, of 2020 when you were in, you know, in the starter or middle of the, of the capital campaign and, and um, you know, what seemed at the time like just a devastating blow enabled, you were able to pivot, I think, is the word that everyone uses. You were able to pivot and create a center that, you know, had those renovations been done five years ago, you wouldn't have had those virtual options. So it was a combination of, you know, this incredibly unfortunate timing that you, you seized and you turned into an opportunity to create something that serves the residents of the community in a way that just you could not have even conceived of several years earlier. So thank you for being that nimble for the board, supporting the work and, and making this into, as, as Leighton said, it's a, it's a gorgeous facility. And if you haven't been up there, even if you're not 55 and older, they'll let you come in. It's really beautiful. And I, I suggest a, a visit. You can, I don't know if the fire is still on at this point, but. There's a, a beautiful fireplace. It was this and, morning. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So anyway, thank you both. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Okay, next up on our agenda is public comments for items not on the agenda. So if anybody here in the room has a comment for any item that's not already on the agenda, this is the time to step up. All right. Anybody online have any comments for something that's not on the agenda? All right, see no hands up. We'll move on from there. After that comes a work session on the Princeton Farmers Market. Thank you, Mayor. Joining us tonight uh, is Jess Morrison and Natalie Fiorino from the Princeton Farmers Market. Uh, as many of the community are aware, the farmer's market has uh, been hopscotching among different sites over the last few years. Um, while the home had typically been Heinz Plaza with the construction work that has been ongoing, uh, the farmer's market moved to the Franklin Avenue lot and then over to 
the Princeton Rail Dinky parking lot last year, and um, the farmer's market folks are back to talk about a long-term plan for the farmer's market back at Heinz Plaza. So with that, I'll turn it over to Jess and Natalie. Sure. Hi. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council, and thank you for your time tonight. Uh, my name is Jess Morrison, and this is Natalie Fiorino. Uh, we're here representing the Princeton Farmers Market. Uh, Natalie is the market manager, and I assist her. Jess, with can you? I assist sure. her yeah. with the. Uh, These people online can't. If the microphone doesn't pick you up, they can't hear you. Got it. Thank you. Uh, and I assist her with some of the back end operations for the market. Um, for those who are unfamiliar with the um, with the. Prince of Farmers Market, we opened back in 2009 and are a 501c3 nonprofit organization. Uh, we, have, uh, we accept SNAP and have a, a matching program as well. Uh, we have a great list of farms and other vendors, many of which have been with us since, since the market has opened, um, providing fresh produce and local products for the community. The summer market historically runs on Thursdays from May to November and the winter market from November to April. Um, as Deanna had said, due to COVID and uh, the ongoing uh, construction project, we've moved to the Franklin lot, and most recently the Dinky lot. And I'd like to say thank you to the town and thank you to Princeton University for allowing us to use, the, uh, use those lots during the time and it's greatly appreciated. Um, that being said, we are very excited to hopefully bring the market back to uh, the center of town and, and uh, back to the plaza and feel that the community vendors and customers will share in that excitement as well. Uh, Natalie's going to go over a few of the highlights for the 2020, 2023 season. So Natalie, take it away. Hello, everyone. Uh, first, I would like to say thank you to the mayor and the council for your time this evening. Uh, like you said, my name is Natalie Fiorino, and I am the market manager, and I will be filling you in on some details of what we have planned for this summer. The Princeton Farmer's Market is not only a place to purchase fresh foods, it is a vibrant community of local vendors, crafters, farmers, and food enthusiasts, and we would love to bring this community back into the heart of downtown Princeton. Many of the vendors and customers have expressed their interest um, and like how much they would love the market to move back downtown. I agree that this would be beneficial for not only the market because there are many offices, um, housing, businesses, and just general foot traffic that'll bring more market uh, customers, but it'll also bring more people into the town, hopefully, to visit the businesses around Heinz Plaza. Um, that said, we would love to use Heinz Plaza every Thursday. Um, then we would like to start on June 1st, but if that's not possible because of the construction, June 8th. And the market will run through the Thursday before Thanksgiving, which is November 16th. The market runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m., but setup generally starts at 8 a.m. and breakdown runs until about 3 p.m. Um, we'll be welcoming a number of very exciting vendors, hopefully. Nothing has been officially confirmed, but we expect around 22 vendors, which is similar to what we had on Heinz Plaza in the past. Um, we will be welcoming many community favorites back, um, including two organic farms, Chickadee Creek Farm and Cherry Grove Organic Farm, two well-loved fruit orchards, Terhune Orchards and Fruitwood Farms. Um, we will also be welcomed back Lima Farms, uh, Davidson Mushrooms, and Longview Flowers. Um, we will hopefully also be welcoming many new vendors to the plaza, including uh, Catalina Empanadas, um, which offers fresh baked empanadas, they're really good. Um, Barking Good Bakery, uh, which offers uh, handmade like dog treats and cat treats. Um, let's see, who else is new? Um, Oh, Long uh, Lost Bread Company. They do all fresh, fresh baked whole grain breads with grains that they mill um, and harvest locally. So that's really cool. Um, in addition to the vendors, we'd also like to have live music on the plaza for um, part of the market time every Thursday. And we also would like to offer space to our sponsors and community partners. Um, for instance, Penn Medicine does um, blood pressure screenings for the community, and we. Um, arm in arm comes and collects um, donations for local food pantries. Um, we also work with SNAP and City Green, like he said. To, um, we accept SNAP and we uh, offer a $10 match on all SNAP purchases to um, help allow everybody the, 
the ability to afford fresh local food. Um, so, yeah. So we would like to also offer parking for all of the mentioned vendors and community partners. Uh, we have four large farm trucks and three smaller trucks that we need street parking for. And we would also like um, about 20 parking deck spots, if possible. Um, I think that's all I have for you. Um, thank you again for listening. Let me know if you have any questions. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Let's start with... Eve, you want to go first? Well, the most important question is, is the pickle guy coming back? Yes, the pickle that guy will be here. That is going to influence yes. what, I, what I, okay, <laughs> all right. Yes. Um, uh, thank you for that. I, I think that, um, you know, I want to hear from Deanna a little bit about uh, the, the parking issues and, and how that uh, will work out. So you're able, willing to start as late as June 8th if construction because um, yes. I know it would be disruptive to start in one place and then switch mid-season. You wouldn't want to Yeah, we do would like that. to keep it in one spot. Moving yeah. around a lot isn't really great for the market, yeah. So, I mean, June 1st is optimal, but I understand if that's not possible, and June 8th would be great. Sorry if you can't hear me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, thanks. That's all I have right now. Thank you. Okay, David? Well, we'll get all the questions, Deanna, and then come back. David. Yeah, I, well, I mean... Uh, as with everything about Princeton, I think I'm curious about the parking as well, but maybe you can answer um, how that worked in the past uh, at Heinz Plaza. It's especially hard for me to imagine uh, how the large trucks um, fit into uh, the town, you know, and, and I'm curious whether they could come set up at you know, 8 a.m., which is not a not a difficult time for parking, be parked somewhere a little bit remotely and then come back, you know, just to load up at the end of the day rather than trying to find parking for four large trucks right in the center of town. Sure, I can. Uh, so historically, the uh, again, all these vendors have been historically, they were on the plaza before. Hey, um, sorry about that. Uh, the... Larger box trucks generally park on the library side of Witherspoon Street. Uh, when there was not the bump out there, it was a little, little easier and a little more space for them to, to spread out. Um, the, the other larger trucks would, would either make their way there or um, actually they were all able to, to park right out front there. Um, Moving forward, I think the four box trucks would have to be parked close by as those are the farms and they can't bring all of their product out at market setup time. They have to go back and forth. And there is one other vendor who has a larger truck, Lima Farms, who again can't bring all of his product out initially. The other two larger trucks could be parked on street at a, at a different location if there's not enough spots in the center of town. Um, and I, I believe, I think that's generally how, how, we, uh, how we had done that historically, though, as well. Okay. Other? Yeah. yeah, it all sounded great until you brought up the parking. <laughs> Jess, you strategically assigned it to your uh, partner to ask about the parking, right? Um, I am wondering about the um, Griggs lot, because I don't think that's going to be built on yet this summer, and perhaps some. Um, Palmer Square, our partner might want to uh, donate a few spaces. Have you reached out to them at all or had that conversation? Historically, we, we generally don't, haven't had any spots on in Griggs lot. Uh, I, that's something that we could certainly reach out to Palmer Square and see if they would uh, be willing to help. That would be um, a nice gesture from them. Um, yeah, I think it's definitely challenging and we just have to hear from Deanna how that would work, but it's really exciting that it's coming back, and I, I would love to see it come back as soon as possible if we can work out the details. So. Uh, I actually, I would love to see it back, and I've heard, I know from others that they miss having it centralized at Heinz Plaza, as especially uh, appreciate for those who, who live in Princeton being able to walk there or ride their bikes. But as far the parking is, is a concern, uh, and I wonder 
you know, I don't know logistically how complicated it would be to find uh, once setup is done to find parking close enough. And I wonder if the Y, the Y's parking lot, w is that something that can be explored? It's not too far. Um, again, in the in the summertime, the Y's uh, parking lot does get pretty full with all of the camps and summer programs they have. But we can certainly um, in the in the winter season, the Y has helped us um, in the past with the winter market and um, and hosting the market uh, during that time. Um, in terms of the large box trucks, though, I, I, I believe they should all fit in front of the library. Uh, the, the bump out kind of ends right in front of the library there, and I believe there's six spots there that um, I was hoping that if, if everyone was okay with that, that that would be where the larger box trucks that need to be close um, and stay on site would be able to park. But that, again, would be um, up to the community. And I just well. want to throw out another up potential a location that is not too far and that I think there's parking available most times is the Westminster parking lot. I don't know if that's too far. If you needed to have uh, a place to, you know, like I said, once setup is, is done, to have an al alternative place okay. to, to park the trucks. Layton. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Yeah, f first, I just want to, you know, you, you, you talked about 2009 and how long this has been going on. So, I, you know, I don't think a lot of people know that um, uh, you two are the brains behind the operation and you have been there from the start. So, first, I want to acknowledge that um, with regard to your business operation, too. I'm thinking maybe if you talk with the people at the public library, you could stage right on the, uh, the entranceway into the back of the library and into the garage adjacent to uh, Witherspoon Grill. That, I think that would hold two or three uh, large box trucks there that might be able to help you out. But I just um, also want to encourage that the best place that I've ever seen a location is at Heinz Plaza where you get the most bang for your buck and it's uh, easy to get to for most people in town that want it. So I, I really hope we can uh, get you back there in good shape and also have the truck stage in close proximity so that you can do as, as uh, you know, as well as you should be able to do with good food and good people coming after it. Thank you. Thanks, Leighton. Deanna, do you want to? Yes, thank you. Um, Jess and Natalie have been great working with us. Uh, we're in the process of preparing uh, an agreement for this year. In the past, we have not had an agreement. So this year, we will be bringing a, an agreement to council um, at the next council meeting on May 8th. Um, within that agreement, we will include this information about parking. Uh, we've been talking about some different locations for the different vehicles, understanding that certain farm trucks need to be close to the plaza. So as Jess had mentioned, um, there are a series of six parking spaces on the plaza side of Witherspoon Street between the plaza and um, Paul Robeson. So the idea is that would accommodate about four of the farms. Um, and I think we were talking about a maximum of six box trucks for the farms that we would need to accommodate closer to the square. So then on the opposite side of the street on the Griggs um, corner side between Paul Robeson and Whole Fish, there's another yeah. three parking spaces. Um, so the, the spillover could occur there. If there was any larger vehicles that didn't fit in the garage, um, our starting point for conversation is on Paul Robeson itself. Um, maybe the spillover location, and then we're working through the numbers within the parking deck for passenger vehicles um, to be accommodated. So, so it's while well, the the town has been um, providing this assistance to the farmers market all these years as it's been on Heinz Plaza, 
we didn't have anything formalized. So um, I know with more activities and, and more demands on the plaza, we wanted to make sure that uh, we had this community discussion, reviewed the concerns about parking, and then it would be incorporated into this agreement that you'll see next month. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think, one sec, yeah. I think the parking obviously is, the devil's always in the details. Um, and the less parking that we have to dedicate to this, the better. But obviously there's a balance there that has to happen because you can't, as you said, not every amount of product can be just put out there on the plaza and as they sell things, they gotta get more out of the trucks. But we just need to find some reasonable balance there. Because I think last time it was on Heinz Plaza, part of the problem also is that people would drive into the area, see all these trucks and just keep on going and say, okay, how am I gonna park here? Mm -hmm. So I think part of it is, advertising that the easiest thing for anybody going there is just pull right into the garage. It's right there. Come out of the garage, you walk a couple hundred feet and you're right there, you get your stuff and you go back. But anyway, Eve and then David. Uh, thanks. Uh, Deanna, so uh, f first, uh, let's leave parking aside for one moment. Um, is the June 1st or June 8th date given the Witherspoon, can, like you feel comfortable? With that, because I hate to, you know, make a promise or a commitment and then have it. Okay. I know you can't 100% predict, but. Uh, weather permitting and PSE and G permitting, uh, that, that we feel is a conservative date uh, for the farmer's market to move ahead. Okay. All right, so that's very good. Um, I know that uh, the parking garage, our, our parking garage has been used in the past for 20 to 25 cars. Um, and obviously it's not that the parking garage is necessarily full all the time, so that's not necessarily lost revenue. But I'd love to see included in the information you bring to us some information about what, what this is theoretically costing the municipality because I think that we should be clear-eyed about the costs of, of commitments that we're, we're making. And to pick up on, on Mia's uh, suggestion, you know, Palmer Square also has a garage uh, which, you know, and the, the two commercial garages in town are much less full because they're much more expensive than the municipal garage. Maybe that's something, since a lot of the people that go to the farmer's market are then going to go shop in Palmer Square, maybe Palmer Square would be willing to, or even the other garage, I, I don't know who owns them, um, you know, would be willing to share, split the cost of that with us. So maybe we get 10 cars in the municipal garage at a, a lower uh, potential opportunity cost to us, if that's the right term, and then 10 in, you know, a parked in Palmer Square. If you could explore those options with uh, your fellow business owners, that would be great. Absolutely. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Deanna. David, do you have a Yeah, I just wanted to um, have Deanna reflect on Sylvia Beachway. I thought Leighton's idea was an interesting one. It is an interesting one, and we will definitely uh, talk with the library and see what their thoughts on it yeah, are. I think it's better than the other side of Witherspoon. There's for always big trucks delivering stuff. I mean, that would be for, for your restaurants, Jess. So, so yeah. if that can be coordinated, because I've you know pulled in there and seen these enormous trucks that are delivering there, so... Certainly, I, th I think it's become a little bit more of a, a prize space for all deliveries to the mm. downtown area. Um, I should also, I, I didn't thank the library, but I, the library staff has always been a huge, huge help. Uh, the, f the facility staff in particular, um, Pat and Joe, I was speaking with them today, um, and there were a lot of trucks out there. They're, they're doing some construction work. Um, we were doing construction work earlier in the year and using the spots. Um, so as some of the loading zones in, in the downtown area have gotten shifted and with construction, those that has been a highly used section for just other trucks coming into town. So um, I'm just not totally sure about the availability all the time for that. Um, certainly the unloading process happens there for the people going into the garage. Um, you know, they, they put their hazards on there, they unload their stuff and then park in the garage. Uh, but with the larger trucks to occupy that whole that section um, for for that you know the, for uh, for most of Thursday would might be a little a little tricky. Maybe Isaac can help you 
you know, reach out to, to all the, the businesses to figure out if, if that can be, can sure. be, you know, reserved for the farmer's market on that day. I mean, it already says no parking, which, you know, pretty much people ignore for some period of time, so. I mean, we, and okay, I did yeah. want to point out that we um, reached out to Isaac in Experience Princeton, and he was able to uh, talk to the various businesses downtown, and by far the majority of businesses support having uh, the farmer's market come back. Yeah. And um, so we'll definitely be working with them and talking through the plans with where the parking is going to end up before we come back to you. Thanks. Two quick comments, and then we do have a member of the public that wants to speak on this also. We just need to keep in mind, obviously, what happens with the repairs we're doing to our garage. And I don't know what the timetable is for that, but what if since a large number of spaces will be uh, unavailable during the repairs on a rotating basis, that could impact what we're doing, not just with this group, but with, with other people that are in the garage. And if you're going to talk to Palmer Square Management, I would, I would focus on the Chamber Street garage and not the Hullfish garage. The Chamber Street garage is the one that usually has more vacancies than the Chamber Street, I mean, than the Hullfish garage. All right, let me just get to uh, the member of the public and then we'll jump back here and see if there's any other questions for you. Uh, okay, can the people working the magic in the back room bring in? Uh... Hmm. They canceled. No, nope, the hand's back up. Here we go. Hey, Kim. Hi. Thanks so much for uh, letting me speak. Firstly, I wanted to thank you. My name is Kim Dorman, 88 Patton Avenue. I also work at the Princeton Public Library. And I wanted to thank you uh, for your resolution uh, for National Library Week. I also wanted to um, thank Drew Dyson for his presentation, a wonderful job. And finally, I didn't come here for this, but when I heard that the farmer's market wanted to come back to Heinz Plaza, I literally jumped up and yelled on my deck um, because I'm so excited about that prospect. Um, and I was really pleased to hear uh, that you have found our staff and particularly uh, Joseph and Pat wonderful to work with. I would be thrilled, 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 thrilled if you were back because I've barely been able to get to the farmer's market since you left. I live in town. I walk there. Parking is no problem for me because I walk or bike. Um, so thank you. And I'm very excited about this. And thank you for everyone who's making it possible. Thank you, Kim. All right. I'm sorry, I, but I don't think there's any other hands up in the public. Anybody else here on council have any other further questions or comments? I'm sorry, Eve. I, I know Kim is only speaking for herself, but I know that uh, the library director and the library staff are, are very excited and anxious to have you back on the plaza. So that's a unanimous feeling, I think. So. Okay. Was there anything else that you wanted to cover with us? or? No, I don't think so. All set. Yeah. Okay. We will hold our breath waiting for Deanna's. <laughs> detailed uh, proposed agreement and see what see where we go from there thank you both thank, thank you. you thank you thanks okay next up is a public hearing on ordinance 2023-12 an ordinance authorizing the sale of certain land to Lori and Tariq Manzor pursuant to NJSA 40A 12-13 David's making the motion Eve's got the second Questions or comments? I'm sorry? Is there someone yeah, tasked to with remember. explaining? Who I, I forget what this was from the last meeting. This was the sliver of land. Go ahead. Yeah, so um, you will recall in December of 2021, we purchased the 153-acre landwind property uh, to the, I guess, northwest of that property. Uh, the property line was encroached by a uh, ornamental, substantial ornamental brick uh, entry gate uh, to a private residence. Uh, there was a 93 square foot encroachment on the property. Uh, that 93 feet was exempted for, uh, by Green Acres prior to the purchase. Uh, and, uh, you know, one of the options was having them take the wall down, which really wasn't a good option. And they're going to be purchasing that 93 uh, square feet from us, so it will become their land. It doesn't create any Green Acres issues. We've uh, addressed that with Green Acres prior to our purchase, and it's simply now it's housekeeping to get 
move forward with getting that done. The lot lines will be adjusted and there'll be no problems going forward. Thank you. Eve? I'll just clarify that this fence was built uh, long before the people that currently live there. Yeah. So it's not like they did this aggressively on land that wasn't theirs and the, their property uh, title wasn't, you know, didn't indicate to them that they didn't own that. So no, no, no foul on anyone's part. Thank you. All right, any other questions or comments? Any public questions or comments on this? Nobody in the room, anybody online? All right, seeing none, could we have a roll call vote, please? Ms. Niedergang? Yes. Mr. Cohen? Yes. Ms. Sachs? Yes. Ms. Fraga? Yes. Mr. Newlin? Yes. Okay, thank you. We'll move into resolutions. The first one is 23159, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton authorizing a supplemental professional services agreement with T&M Associates in the amount of $28,964 for design modification to the Witherspoon Phase 2, Green Street to Lee Avenue construction drawings for additional improvements at Witherspoon Lane. Is there a motion? Thank you, David. Leighton's got the second. Questions, comments, David? Yeah, I just um, would like to ask if Deanna could talk about this a little bit. Um, I understand that there are concerns about um, how narrow Witherspoon Lane is currently, uh, only about 16 feet wide, and it is a two-way street. Um, but I, I'm, I'm anxious also about what kind of improvements can be made. Uh, I, I did go look at the tax maps. It's called out as a 20-foot right-of-way, and there is a sidewalk along there. I assume the sidewalk's four feet wide, and that's why this street is 16 feet wide. So um, can you talk a little bit about what improvements are mentioned? Yes, I definitely Definitely can, thanks, David. Um, so recently, the planning board approved a four-unit residential development on Witherspoon Lane. Um, this had happened subsequent to the design of phase two improvements for Witherspoon Street, and that, that's why this is coming up now at this point. Um, Witherspoon Lane is a public street. It's 20 feet wide um, by right-of-way currently improved with 16 feet of pavement and a uh, four foot sidewalk. Uh, with the addition of four units on Witherspoon Lane, um, it has eight units now, so it'll have um, four additional units. Um, it's a substandard roadway width at 16 feet. So we are looking uh, with TNM to see what we can do to widen the roadway. Um, first, we need to survey it because we were not looking to substantially change um, the improvements at the intersection with Witherspoon. Uh, but because now the additional units have triggered this um, review of the roadway with we need additional survey land survey work to specifically identify where the right-of-way land lies on the ground because there's also utility poles within uh, the right-of-way so it's it's going to be I think a, a design challenge to see what we can fit in there and you know you may remember with Withers or sorry with Williams Street we've talked about advisory bike lanes maybe there is some version of that that we might be considering for pedestrians on um, on Witherspoon Lane so that that's um, was the impetus for the supplemental services we are in the construction phase of phase two it's not as if this is an oversight um, it's, it's literally a change of condition that we have the opportunity now before the roadway is finalized to look at this and, and make some, you know, really safe, safety-based improvements for all users at that area. Um, so that, that's the basis in the background. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm, I just really want to, uh, I'm not sure who caught this, but 
really want to uh, praise I think it engineer. was Jim. Yeah. <laughs> Jim and Dan. <laughs> um, Thank you. I'll, I'll for being proactive on. about it instead of waiting for somebody to come and say, you know, we've got to do something, uh, yes. taking, taking the bull by the horns. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Leighton. Deanna, just a quick question. Did I hear you say that there, there are eight units on Witherspoon Lane now, and they're going to increase by a number of four to 12 units? Correct. Can, I'd just like to know where on Witherspoon Lane are these additional four units going to go? They are going in um, the open parking lot area currently. Yes, behind Nick Hilton's uh, building. Oh, uh, okay. I'm sorry, they have about twice the parking currently that they're required to have. Okay. So they're making better use of some of that pavement. Thank you, okay. I was just gonna say for anyone who's interested in this, there was a, I think a, I missed it, but there was a four hour planning board discussion of this uh, last week in detail, including the parking and circulation. And I hear David did a heroic job of um, helping correct and um, direct the, the activity to, toward a satisfactory resolution for everyone. So there's a planning board uh, discussion which goes into detail. Um, I have a question. Yeah, so Deanna, we, we received a letter um, from a constituent as shortly before the meeting tonight asking about some of the costs related to this and I'm wondering, um, and I forwarded that letter to you. Did, did your uh, comments just now answer the questions in that letter, or, was, uh, or did you want to add anything? Let me review that again. And that was from uh, Mr. Lyons. Right. I'm having trouble pulling it up because he's also contacted us on, okay, here we go, thank you. Like I said, this is an additional unforeseen uh, design feature that um, was not known as part of the original scope. It's additional scope of work. Uh, so I would say that I have fully responded to the concerns that were raised in this. The question was uh, from a constituent was uh, was uh, about what would, what were perceived to be cost overruns, and so I think uh, Deanna's point was that um, the this is a, a response to a change in circumstance. It was not the original. Uh, it was not part of the original scope of work. I just want to make that clear. So. Yes, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 23160, resolution of the mayor and council of Princeton adopting the municipal emergency management basic plan. Is there a motion? Thank you, Leticia. Is there a second? Eve's got the second. Questions or comments? Okay. Uh, I would just mention that this is a plan that is supposed to be put together every year. And uh, it went through a whole bunch of updates recently. Uh, and thank you to all the council members who also helped with those updates. Uh, but the plan's in pretty good shape. So uh, thank you to Mike Yeh, our Director of Emergency Services. All right, no questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 23161, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton authorizing the continued use of a portion of Community Park South until May 5, 2024 for a temporary dog park. It's a very popular place, I must add. So are you making the motion? Thank you. I am enthusiastically and emphatically making the motion. I am very surprised. Um, <laughs> Leticia has got the second. Any uh, questions? How long, are we, how long are we extending it for, Mayor? Uh, it says till May 5. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, good, 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 good. I'm just picking with Council President a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the, uh, for the uh, levity. Any, uh, okay, no other questions or comments? All in favor, say aye. 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 
Okay, 23-162, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton authorizing support for the Lawrence Hopewell Trail Corporation and Mercer County Transportation and Community Development Initiative grant application from the Delaware Valley Regional Planning Commission. Is there a motion? Thank you, Eve. Mia's got the second. Questions or comments? I think we had chatted about this. Go ahead. Just want to thank Lisa Seriusel again for all her work on this amazing trail, and we're so pleased to support your work in that. I'm yeah. proud that you're a Princeton resident. So. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a great idea. All right, nothing else? No other comments or questions? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, I'm going to read the next resolution, and I know we have a member of the public that wants to speak to this, so I'm just saying that out loud so I don't forget. 23163, resolution of the Mayor and Council of Princeton, authorizing the submission of a substantial amendment of the 2022 Community Development Block Grant Program Annual Action Plan in the amount of $284,943. Layton's got the motion, Leticia's got the second. We'll start up here. Any council questions or comments? Okay, I think there's, if you could just introduce your, say your name and, and address and. Hi, I'm Hilda Krieger, Wilson Road. I'm here to express concern about the substantial amendment to the 2022 Community Development Block Grant Program Annual Action Plan and ask that council ensure that the proposed Penn Island Learning Center capital improvements benefit Princeton Housing Authority residents. I'll speak briefly to the following point. According to Housing and Ur Urban Development's website, CDBG grantees must meet the following standards of citizen participation. To provide citizens with reasonable and timely access to local meetings, information, and records related to the grantees proposed and actual use of funds. Provide for public hearings to obtain citizen views and to respond to proposals and questions at all stages of the community of development program, including at least the development of needs the review of proposed activities and the review of government performance. Provide for timely written answers to written complaints and grievances. And lastly, identify how the needs of non-English speaking residents will be met in the case of public hearings where a significant number of non-English speaking residents can be reasonably expected to participate. The resolution notes that a hearing was conducted on March 20th to solicit feedback. This hearing was hastily announced and held during the daytime. I attended this hearing, and while some explanation as to the use of these funds was provided, many questions asked at the hearing went unanswered. As the resolution and attached memorandum do not explain how the proposed capital improvements were prioritized and how they will result in the desired outcome of social services activities and educational programming, I ask that the council consider that this amendment was not drafted in accordance with CDBG guidelines and that they hold higher standards for community engagement when uh, annual action plans are drafted in future. Thanks. Thank you. Jeff, do you want to comment on the process at all? Or? Sure. Thanks, Mayor. Um, we also have Mark Lackington and um, Lewis Hurd on the call, just in case they want to speak up if they raise their hand. Um, the substantial amendment process was fully compliant with the citizen participation requirements. Uh, the advertisement for the public hearing appeared in the March 10th edition of the Trenton Times. And the hearing was, as noted, uh, held on March 20th. Um, in our four-year CDBG history so far, they've always been held in the afternoon, um, and obviously always via Zoom because this has primarily been done during COVID. Um, participation for members of the public has always been robust, uh, with sometimes more than 10 people participating. Um, and at no point had uh, Mark Lekinton or, or Lewis at that point uh, received any question about uh, it being inconvenient or limiting. But it is a good point, and it's a good idea to consider holding uh, two public hearings on the same day in the future, one at the normal time during the day, and then another in the early evening. Um, and uh, we're going to look for those best practices moving forward. Thank you. Any uh, other public comment? Okay. Any council questions, comments? Layton. Thanks, Mayor. Uh, I'm going to be as brief as I possibly can. I was not going to weigh in on this tonight, but a birdie in the back of my mind or on my shoulder said, you better say something, because it's time. Um, I was the chairman of the Princeton Housing Authority Board for almost 20 years. And I stepped down from the board uh, when I was fortunate enough by the 
good residents of the town of Princeton to be elected uh, as a member of council. And I want to say to the people gathered in this room and to everyone locally within the sound of my voice that no matter what position you're taking with regard to the CDBG funds that are allocated or perhaps will be allocated tonight, I just want you to know that the good news after 80 years in the business of serving the public in Princeton is that the Princeton Housing Authority is getting a lot of attention thrown its way. And the reason that's good is because there's some work being done at the Housing Authority. There's good work being done by a good chairman, Felicia Spitz, who's in the audience tonight, her board, the interim executive director, John Clark. And the most important thing I want to share with the public and the people in this building today is that the, for the first time in, in, in my observation, and again, you're talking to someone who was uh, chair, the residents are really happy. There is a real good response from the residents who live in public housing that somebody is paying attention to their life, their livelihood, their quality of life, and where it is they live. So I want those people who are or feel circumspect about the work that the Housing Authority is doing or who feel in some way that the residents who live in public housing are not being treated fairly or justly here in Princeton to continue your advocacy because if we ever needed you, if you really do care about the underserved, if you really do care about the underprivileged, if you really do care about the poorest people who live here in Princeton, keep up your advocacy. Watch the work that's being done. And when you see it being done, positively acknowledge it and continue your advocacy to work on behalf of the residents that live in public housing and the board that is actively trying to make their lives better. Thank you for the time. Okay, thank you. Any other questions or comments? Okay, if not, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Next up is the consent agenda, and if no one has anything to pull out of the consent agenda, someone could move the consent agenda. Would someone like to do that? Mia, thank you very much. Eve's got the second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 And David, do you have a motion? I would move that we adjourn. Thank you. Is there a second? Somebody second it. Thank you, Leighton. Oh. Hey. oh, did you? Sorry, I missed it. I'm trying to watch the monitor. <laughs> <laughs> all in favor, say aye. 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 We're done. Thank you all for being here tonight. Have a great evening.